In this video, we'll do an overview of completing a work order using the Field Nation app. Here's an example of a work order that I'm going to request. First, I'm going to review the work order. I'm going to check all the tasks, see what will be required. I'll also be looking at the qualifications to make sure that I pass. Also looking at the schedule as well as the policies and procedures, which, you know, there's a lot here, so I would take more time to read that and then check the schedule, uh, map, driving distance, and the rate before deciding whether or not I would request this work order. There's additional information at the bottom, so always make sure you're scrolling all the way down to see all the information. If I wanted to request this work order, I would click Request. Please keep in mind that requesting or accepting a work order is your commitment to that time, schedule, and scope of work. So again, it's important to just make sure you review everything before you send that official request. You do have the option to set your start time in the screen, but you don't have to. It'll also prompt you to set your start time after you send the request. For work orders with a set start time or a hard start, the start time will default to whatever the scheduled time the buyer has input. In that case, you would not be able to enter a different start time other than what's already there. However, for work orders that give you a schedule range for certain days or times you can choose from, you'll enter your own start time and then you'll also have the option to adjust the duration. You'll notice that it will not let me set the range longer than the end of the last day. So here I tried to set a time and a duration past the finish by time. It says start time is outside of schedule range. So I have to go back in, I have to readjust the start time in this case, I would be making it earlier in the day to fit the duration in. And then if I happen to have a duration that I feel is longer than what the buyer has input, for example, I think it's going to take an extra hour. If I change the duration, then again, I have to go back in, make my start time a little bit earlier to allow for that amount of time. Once I set my start time and my duration, I click Save Start Time. Then you'll see that I am now assigned to this work order. My start time is set and I just have to wait until the confirmation window begins in order to confirm my assignment. The confirmation window of a work order will be from 6 a.m. to 12 noon the day before the start time. If the start time has not been set at the time of the request, the confirmation window will be 6 a.m. to noon the day before the earliest start date time set by the buyer in the schedule range. Once the confirmation window begins, you'll be able to confirm your work order. You'll see the confirm button there. Once you click that, the next option it will give you is to mark on my way. It's important to wait to mark on my way until you leave for site. Do not click on my way unless you're actually on your way to site because clicking it sends a message directly to the buyer. If you try to click it too early, you'll get this error message here where it's letting you know that in this case I'm 26 hours ahead of time and that not to click it because it will let the buyer know that I'm leaving. So I just hit cancel. Once it is time to click on my way, again, I just check the schedule, check the tasks, make sure that I have everything that I need before I head to site. Um, and then there's actually two places you can click on my way right under the address or at the very top of the screen. Once I select on my way, the next option it will give me is to check in. Obviously, I would wait till I arrive on site physically before hitting check in. You'll see once I check in, if I am not on site, it will give me this error message. This work order required GPS, so it's telling me that I'm more than one mile away and to either refresh or go closer to site. If you try to check in too early, you'll get a message like this that says you are more than 15 minutes early and more than one mile away. Technically, the system will still let you check in, but the buyer typically requires this so they can confirm your time on site and pay you correctly. So we always recommend that you check in on site and within 15 minutes of the start time, just so there's no confusion. Once you're checked in and ready to begin working, as you go, it's important to check those tasks and make sure that you're doing all the requirements. For this work order, it required a photo of outside of the building. So I took a photo, here I am uploading it to the work order, giving it a file name. At first, it'll just default to whatever the file name is from your phone. However, I like to label all of my deliverables to make sure it's clear. This is especially true for like, let's say, before and after photos. Um, I also recommend using closing notes, as you see here, keeping notes as you go making a log of the work that you've done, what you've completed so far, what may be left to do, if you checked out, things like that, just like a running log. Here you can see I said that I arrived, did the video, took the photo, and left. Now we can see that the upload and the closeout notes check marks are both green. And the last thing we need to do is mark our work order as complete. When you go to do that, you'll see this message here just confirming. Once you mark a work order complete, it cannot be edited. It would have to be moved back into incomplete status to do that. 
Basically, submitting your work order as complete is your way of sending it to the buyer saying it's ready for review for approval. This has been an overview of completing a work order on the FieldNation app. If you have questions, please reach out to FieldNation support or check out our health center.